My name is Jeremy Siskin. Uh, I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, now in its second edition, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book One and Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book Two, which we will be coming back to today because I'm taking um, popular questions. And this is a question that I kind of tried to answer a little bit in Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book Two. The question is, what are some great solos for beginners to transcribe? And this is actually a difficult question, especially for pianists, because of course we want to transcribe people who play our own instrument. And yet, even the less technical pianists who um, are, are great soloists still tend to play a lot of double time, fast, chordal, difficult things to transcribe. Um, so it is always kind of an open question, a really difficult question about you know, where should I get started with the transcription process? So, as I said, I did um, make a first attempt to answer this uh, in Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2. I think there's either five or six transcription projects in here. And the transcription projects are kind of nice. I don't, I'm not intending to do a commercial here uh, because I give you the chord symbols that you want to reference as well as um, some some of the harder phrases I've put in there so that you can check and make sure you're in the right spot as well as you don't have to deal with some of the more difficult to notate phrases. So the first transcription project in the book is Miles Davis's Bye Bye Blackbird. This is from the album Round Midnight. And Miles Davis is a great place to transcribe, a great place to start transcribing because he does tend to play longer, more melodic phrases. Downsides are that, of course, um, it's less bebop vocabulary, so if you're really looking to get that bebop thing into your fingers, you're not really getting that. Also, Miles plays really behind the beat, which uh, generally jazz musicians are pretty okay with that, but it can be a little bit difficult for a first transcription to be kind of wondering, well, oh, it's kind of in between the beat. Where should this line up? Um, but with that said, I think Miles Davis is a great place to start. The Bye Bye Blackbird solo is a fantastic one. Um, Freddy Freeloader from Kind of Blue is a fantastic one. Of course, you could also transcribe So What from Kind of Blue, although that's something kind of specific. Uh, my first ever transcription project that I ever did was Miles Davis's solo on Autumn Leaves from the Cannonball Adderley album, Something Else. Great solo. Has some real similarities to the Freddy Freeloader solo, actually, um, which is really interesting. Um, I'll just insert a word of advice, which is that please, please, please play your transcriptions, like play them 50 times. Um, don't just write them down. It's the playing along with that musician that really gets the sense of style. Some other horn players, um, you know, the other person who I think gets assigned a lot for a first transcription is Shet Baker, who's both a horn player and a vocalist, but just plays these beautiful, simple, swinging, melodic lines, which are both completely um, attractive in a jazz style, a little bit maybe more beboppy and traditional than Miles is playing, um, but very accessible, pretty easy to transcribe. I know there's solos on There Will Never Be Another You, um, there's solos on uh, It Could Happen To You, um, and quite a few more that people transcribe from Shet Baker. Downside there, a lot of them are pretty short. Some of them are just, you know, because he was making these vocal recordings, a lot of times he's just playing like half a chorus and then coming back in with the second half. So it doesn't give you quite as much satisfaction. Uh, there's not quite as much to sink your teeth into, um, maybe as the Miles Davis. Some other first transcription solos that I love. Um, so one of them that's in the book is an Illinois Jaquette solo on Las Vegas Blues. This is a great first blues solo, and it's a little bit more beboppy than things that you'll find from Miles Davis. Um, I think it's about six or seven choruses, but of course you can transcribe as much as you want. Um, just great blues vocabulary, very swinging, very singable, very melodic, great jazz content. I, it's, it's a really great one to get started with. That's the third transcription that's in the book here. Um, two other classics that I do with a lot of my students, um, Louis Armstrong's solo on Potato Head Blues. Um, it's not one where you are going to learn how to play over two five ones or chord changes, but the spirit of it, uh, the way he uses arpeggios, the rhythm, the articulation, like it's so good for jazz feel. It's just a fun solo. Um, with some of these early jazz things, you do have to contend that the 
um, intonation can be kind of sometimes a little bit in between. So playing along with it is sometimes not, maybe not as pleasurable as it might be. Uh, but speaking Louis Armstrong. <laughs> It's just 32 bars um, and it's got so many great arpeggios and shapes it's really fun another one that i uh, just absolutely adore is lester young's solo on lady be good um, it's a little bit pre-bebop so it doesn't quite have that charlie parker-ish vocabulary um, but again the rhythms the shapes the way that he plays with motifs uh, and just the sheer joy of it like i feel like if it doesn't make you if it doesn't put a smile on your face, you know, go get your go get your smile checked, I guess. Courses on Lady Be Good. It's in G, which is a little bit weird. And this one is a little bit faster. So if you're not as confident uh, of a pianist, this just goes, might be a little bit quick for you. Whereas those Miles Davis solos, I think, would be more doable. Now, um, for me, more bebop vocabulary, I am a big Hank Mobley advocate. You know, he is somebody who just plays classic, beautiful, melodic, bebop, um, memorable, singable solos, yet not usually so technical that they are going to really hold people off. So uh, in the book, uh, one of the transcription projects is for uh, If I Should Lose You, and I particularly like that one. I chose that one because it's got a lot of minor uh, 251 vocabulary in there, but anything off of Soul Station is just going to be killer. I mean... Just about every jazz musician has transcribed the solo to remember, um, or can at least sing it. Uh, this I dig of you. He's not, you know, trying to show off with double time um, and crazy stuff like that. So anything off of Hank Mobley Soul Station. While we're talking about Hank Mobley Soul Station, the Wynton Kelly solos on that album, if you're looking to transcribe a piano solo, are pretty darn good ones. Uh, the solo on Remember is great. The solo on If I Should Lose You is great. Um, and of course, I would be totally remiss. I would, you know, have to give back all my jazz credentials if I did not mention Winton Kelly's solo on Freddie Freeloader. But that one's a little harder. <laughs> you know, that one might be your sixth or seventh or eighth transcription. It's so freaking good. <laughs> um, but there's definitely some technical stuff. Um, if, if I mean. <laughs> for our students who are having trouble with swing feeling because Wynton Kelly's swing feel is just so incredibly exuberant. Um, so you can almost not call yourself a jazz musician until you learn that solo. I know that's an overstatement. Not everybody has to, but uh, so, so many people have learned that one. Um, so as far as piano solos, uh, those Wynton Kelly ones are pretty good to start with. Uh, we talked about the Miles Davis Bye Bye Blackbird solo. Some of those Red Garland solos, they're definitely harder, <laughs> without a doubt, than the horn solo. But Red Garland solo on Bye Bye Blackbird um, is a really great one. Uh, it's two choruses, well, it's kind of like one and a half. The second chorus, he goes into block chords. But the vocabulary is just so great, and he's not you know, running Oscar Peterson's 16th notes all over the place. Um, so that's definitely a, a doable one, in my opinion. Now, in the book, um, there's a, uh, as 
you know, you get more advanced, you get through the book. There are a couple of piano solos. Uh, one of them that I chose was Horace Silver's solo on Olio. Uh, it's from a Miles Davis uh, recording. And Horace Silver's a really great pianist, it, uh, and he's using mo mo motifs beautifully, um, but it's not too technically challenging. And then I selected a Bud Powell solo on Ornithology, because you have to know at least a couple Bud Powell solos to be a jazz pianist. Um, many of you might know the, the Celia solo is one that a ton of jazz pianists have transcribed and learned and committed to memory, including yours truly. I'm not sure that I could bust it out just right this minute, um, but that is a total classic um, solo. So the Ornithology solo in Bud Powell, there's a couple different versions um, of Ornithology, but then the Celia, as you get more advanced, that solo is a great one. So I didn't write any of this down. I hope that you don't mind me just talking to you for a little while. Um, and um, yeah, feel free to comment with the beginning solos that you have transcribed in the comments and we can make this uh, a collaborative effort. But yeah, those are the ones that I would recommend. I'm gonna do my best to summarize. Miles Davis, Bye Bye Blackbird, Freddie Freeloader, Autumn Leaves, Shet Baker, there will never be another you. It could happen to you. A heck of a lot more. Um, we talked about Illinois Jaquette, Las Vegas Blues, really great one. Um, we talked about Louis Armstrong, Potato Head Blues. We talked about uh, Lester Young, Lady Be Good. So good, so fun. Um, and then Hank Mobley, kind of anything off of Soul Station, including If I Should Lose You and Remember, Wynton Kelly, anything off of Soul Station, basically also that Freddie Freeloader solo, Red Garland, Bye Bye Blackbird, and then Horace Silver, Olio. Uh, I think there's probably a lot more great Horace Silver ones to check out. Um, Bud Powell, Ornithology, Celia for like more advanced stuff. So I hope that you found that useful. Uh, like I said, share your own below. Um, and I need to think of a word to, uh, why don't we say macadamia in the comments if you made it this far. Have a great one, everybody.